the uh, COVID outbreak, occupa COVID occupational health outbreak response team, that's OHORT, and um, the many colleagues who makes this possible, including our colleagues at the CSIR, in particularly, I guess, a shout out, as they would call it, in the modern media um, framework, to the head of the epidemiology and surveillance section, that's Professor Nisha Naika, who's done quite a lot to put all of this together and to make possible that we bring you uh, a more detailed practical session on very key tools that is related to the occupational uh, um, safe uh, surveillance. Have I got that right? O OHSS. Um, Herman, if you could just give me a, a, um, a, a, the full name for OHSS. Occupational Health Surveillance System. Thank you very much. Um, I think my coffee hasn't kicked in yet this morning. Um, so the program has uh, Herman LaRue on it, and I'll be introducing him in a moment. And he'll be taking all of us through a very, very practical step-by-step -step process that will focus on an essential tool of the occupational surveillance system that quite a lot of people have collaborated with the NIH, including the CSIR, to put together. So... Um, you have received the program. Um, it is dealing with the tool, the See More tool. Uh, this is particularly looking at creating your own reports that Herman LaRue from the CSR will address. And the list of steps is listed in the program from capturing events, use of the map view, using See More event view filter, a basic See More reporting, using See More analytics. C, uh, using CMO analytics, the detailed reporting component thereof, and exporting data to Excel using CMO analytics, and then finally exporting data to Excel using CMO query view. Um, and then at the end, there'll be uh, some time for question answers. So uh, the occupational surveillance system as, as a means of introduction uh, arrives, as you've seen in the slides we had just prior to um, us starting this uh, webinar, it arises from the directive on occupational health and safety measures in certain workplaces. That is directive in the um, regulation uh, 479, uh, which was um, published officially on the 28th of September. September 2020. It became into effect on that particular date last year in September. And the Department of Employment and Labor therefore now requires employees to submit the relevant information of all workers who test positive for COVID-19 uh, um, to the NIH. Although surveillance has been ongoing since the outbreak began in South Africa, it is now a legal requirement uh, for all businesses with greater than 50 employees. So if you have more than 50 employees, please speak to your colleagues in your sector and in your industry, in your region and in your city, um, uh, that this is now a legal requirement for everybody with more than 50 employees to submit weekly data on symptomatic employees, positive cases, return to work and health outcomes, as well as a once-off submission on vulnerable employees. The information submitted to the occupational health surveillance system for COVID-19 will provide us with an in-depth understanding of the COVID-19 infection in the South African workforce. And such data is critical to ensure that there is effective planning and implementation of the uh, interventions required within the South African economy and workplaces throughout all our sectors. Uh, employers can submit the required employee information on one of the three platforms. So today we're dealing with the first platform, that's the Seymour, which is an app or an application. The second means of submitting your data is to submit an Excel or CSV, the other sort of version of the um, spreadsheet, um, on Nextcloud. So the first option is Seymour, which is an app. And then you can submit the Excel sheet and the CSV spreadsheet on the next cloud. And the third option is via API, API, if you have the app already. So this workshop will focus particularly on the first route of uh, the submission of data, which is a legal requirement in terms of the, the directive um, made uh, 
yeah, announced on the 28th of September 2020. So uh, with much, not much further ado, I'm now going to um, introduce to you um, our presenter for this uh, hour and a half, and that's Herman LaRue. Um, he has been with the South African Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, the CSIR for short, since April 1998, and he's at present the research group leader for the command and control systems in the defense and security cluster. He's involved in the command and control technology as applied to the whole of government initiatives across diverse domains, including defense, safety and security, public transport, disaster management, health, and the protection of infrastructure and natural assets. Interests include information fusion, artificial intelligence, interoperability, modeling and simulation, and software engineering. LaRue completed a master's degree in computer engineering at the University of Pretoria in 1999 with a focus on pattern recognition. He's also presented papers at various international conferences, published in local and international journals, and authored two books, chapters with a third in progress. With that short introduction, Herman, I hand over to you um, to uh, share your presentation. My understanding is much of this is practical where you'll be sharing the actual screens uh, for the different Seymour uh, components and elements. Um, Herman, over to you. As a uh, reminder, well, apologies, Herman, just one quick announcement. As a reminder, please type your questions in the Q&A box. That is your questions related to the Seymour tool. Um, and please, other general admin and comments and thank yous for Herman's presentations in the chat box, right? Um, as you've seen in the slides, all microphones, videos, and hand raising and other functions have been muted because of the large numbers of people. We have a facility of up to a maximum of a thousand for this. With that announcement, um, I now hand over to Herman. Apologies for the, the short interruption there. Uh, no, thank you. That's perfect. Thank you, Ashraf. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. Please do. And your microphone is clear. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes. Uh, thank you then very much for that introduction and um, good morning to everyone. Um, as you heard, please, if you've got questions, uh, please type those into the Q&A box. Um, I will attempt to respond to them um, uh, probably during the, um, the session. Um, as we go along, I want to keep the se uh, session relatively interactive, although it is a bit challenging with such a, a large group. But um, we will then, um, after the session, I will uh, try to, to address all of the questions that, that we could not address during the session. Um, I'm going to just start with um, the overview slides again, just very quick. Uh, I, I don't want to spend too much time on that because it was the focus of the previous uh, webinar. Uh, so first of all, uh, this is the normal agenda that we, that we did last time. And then um, this is the process that you are used to when uh, registering on the NIOH uh, portal and where you select your different options. Um, it is here where you start to select the, the Seymour option when you want to register. Um, there you could see it on, on the screen and, and so forth. So I'm not going to go in detail through, through that process. Uh, just to confirm, um, I think most people have now uh, resolved issues with access and a large number of the access issues were a result of not using the correct uh, uh, browser. Um, so Google Chrome is best supported um, with the Seymour platform. And then uh, Firefox uh, should work as well and Apple Safari should work as well. Um, you may get some warnings that uh, Seymour is not compatible with those platforms, but it is, um, it is generally, uh, they do work, uh, it does work on those um, uh, platforms. Um, Internet Explorer definitely does not work. Microsoft Edge might seem like, it, like it, it's working, but certain things are not working. Certain options are just not there. Um, so please do not use those browsers. And then uh, the login address for uh, from your browser. Um, this is also part of the registration email that you will receive from NIOH when you've selected the appropriate um, option and, and so forth. Uh, 
in terms of um, uh, submitting data, there's a, a, a number, a business Her ID. Herman, Herman, apologies for interrupting you. Um, yes. There's just a request for you to maximize your slide. At the moment, we can see the um, the smaller versions of this. Ah, thank you very much. Is that better? Uh, please, okay. That's yeah, sorry. Please proceed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Um, so um, there is a business ID that you will receive as part of your registration email, the confirmation email that you receive. Um, that business ID is a, a long number. Um, that, that number is critical when you submit data on the, on the portal. Also, um, a lot of access issues was a result of people copying, pasting their username. Um, the username, uh, it is uh, important to have the full stop uh, between the NIOH and your account number. Um, and there are no spaces before NIOH and after the number. So that is critical as well. And then when you do um, um, put in your password to make sure that uh, with the initial default password, um, you do not include any spaces uh, before or after the password. Okay. The next slide is then um, just how do you submit individual records on the platform? Um, I will collect some example data just now. Um, I will start with a, an empty portal uh, just as everyone else would. Um, I'm just not going to use a proper business ID and so forth, but um, it will be example data. But nevertheless, there are four individual records that can be submitted via the Seymour web portal. And um, those are the, the four that you see there, symptom screening, vulnerability, return, um, return to work and positive test. Now, um, the fields and so forth that is part of those records, um, those are as defined by NIOH. Um, and any questions around the actual, uh, the, which template you should use and the questions and how and at what tempo or when data should be submitted, all of those things are for NIOH to advise um, the, um, the session that I will uh, present today is much more focused on the technical aspects, the um, assisting you with the tool itself and not necessarily uh, the process um, regarding the NIOH and the legalities and so forth that Ashraf um, outlined a bit earlier. Um, uh, also, uh, the business ID, once you've entered it um, the first time, you won't have to um, uh, submit it every time. You will see that when I do the demonstration, um, but make, um, take great care to copy and paste the business ID correctly the first time, um, because that is the, the, the ID that identifies your data submission to NIOH. So if that is incorrect or missing, or if it is your company's name and not your business ID, um, the data is not going to be useful to NIOH and um, they will in effect, they not have received um, the data. Uh, how to submit the records? Um, these slides will be made available. So this is a, a reference slide um, for people to go and review afterwards. Um, I will go through the steps as I'm outlining here. So I'm not going to explain this. One thing that I would like to point out is, um, unfortunately, the system has been, um, has been designed and implemented with later technologies in mind, um, because it is a, a platform that is used across domains. This platform, uh, CMOD platform, was not um, custom developed for this application. It was configured for this application. And hence, you, um, if you have a lower resolution screen than a full HD or a 1080p screen, um, you may have to make some adjustments to your uh, browser's uh, zoom level to be able to see some of the buttons and so forth a bit easier because uh, a lot of the issues that came up is people just did not see the create event button. Um, it's, it's not so clear on the screen right now, uh, perhaps, um, but I'll show you um, what I mean with, with that aspect um, when I create uh, and capture some test data. Um, so, so there's a couple of things. Um, you have to be able to click that create event button. So if your screen resolution is lower, um, you might have to scroll a bit up and down and, and so forth. So that might be a bit irritating. So if you set the screen resolution of the browser uh, or the zoom level of the browser rather, if you change that, um, it may be a bit easier to um, set, um, to, to, to submit your data. Um, I will show some of those steps as well. 
Um, these are just some of the, um, this is the vulnerability and symptom screening templates. As I said, the questions were defined by NIOH. So anything around the specific questions, um, those, quest um, those needs to uh, be uh, discussed with NIOH. Uh, we only implement the template as, as provided. And you will also see that a number of the fields do uh, default to false. Um, this was uh, agreed um, with NIOH, so um, those questions all need to be um, reviewed when you submit data and, and so forth. Uh, these are the other two templates, positive test and return to work. You can see both of these templates are extensive. They do require you to scroll, um, and uh, that is just uh, as, a, as a result of the, the data collection requirement from um, NIOH. Uh, the portal, um, here you see a sort of a, a, sc a screenshot of the bigger portal. Um, the whole idea is that um, you use Seymour to submit individual records, not batches. Um, there is a possibility of submitting or importing data into Seymour. However, that specific function of Seymour um, was not uh, configured or uh, uh, customized for this application. Um, in mind. So uh, it is possible. I know some end users that manage to get data imported and then successfully submit it. Um, if you're technically savvy with these types of applications, um, you are welcome to, uh, to try that. But, uh, but batch um, submissions should be through the other um, options or methods that um, Ashraf also um, indicated uh, during his introduction. Um, some of the things on the left hand side, I will definitely. Um, um, discuss. Uh, one important part that I can just uh, confirm or uh, emphasize rather is that um, if you see a blue um, exclamation mark icon or uh, symbol, it means that you have not selected the correct record type. That data will not be um, correct in terms of uh, submission into, into the NIOH data lake. It does have to um, um, show uh, one of the appropriate um, icons um, associated with the four different types of records that need um, needs to be submitted. So if you see an exclamation mark on your left-hand column on Seymour, it means that you did not successfully submit the data. Um, and that is because you just did not, not select the appropriate um, record. And I'll um, show that in the live test just now. It is also possible to use the mobile application um, for data submission. However, um, this is a bit more intricate. And because of the fact that the four records that we have to submit um, are extensive, it is a bit more difficult on the um, uh, prime real estate of a mobile device screen because uh, um, a screen, a mobile screen is smaller. And um, especially if, if you set it to a lower resolution, it may be difficult to um, submit some of the questions. However, it is possible. And um, if there is an interest in using the mobile app um, extensively for data submission, um, I am sure uh, NIOH would uh, be happy to arrange another webinar where we focus on a mobile data submission. Um, so we can definitely um, look at that. Um, if there's time permitting, um, I will take some questions on that um, at the end of the session, but I doubt if we would be able to get there. So um, this is definitely possible. Um, and unfortunately, it only works for Android um, based devices because you have to access the Google Play Store, which means it might also exclude some of the latest uh, Chinese offerings. Um, because not all of them have got Google Play Store access um, 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 anymore. Good. Um, how to change your password? Um, I can also show you this on the uh, platform itself. Um, uh, just uh, make sure if you want to change your password, um, it would be prudent to update your email address because your updated password um, will um, not be sent there, but whenever a password reset um, is requested, then the reset password will be uh, sent to your um, the email address that is um, reflected under your profile um, when you log into the portal. I'll also show this online. Um, this is just some example screenshots of what we're going to do today. Um, it's just one of the, the options of reporting. Um, so this is then the, the agenda um, for the session. I'm going to minimize that now um, and just leave it there on the side. 
um, I, I will come back to that. Um, I do want to switch to a, a portal. So um, I, I'm, I hope that everyone can, can still see um, this screen. Um, yes, we can. can. Yes, ah, we can. Okay. It's, the, it's the Seymour screen with the four yes, panels. Yes. Yes, perfect. Yeah, I just want to make sure if I keep on switching like that, that it remains visible. Um, so um, if you log in, I'm just going to, to log out so that you get exactly the same screen. Um, um, this is the, the link. Um, and um, I'm just going to, uh, um, I'm just going to um, log in there. Um, this is a test user. Um, and um, this is how anyone else, the first time they get their um, they get their credentials. Um, this is how it looks like you um, when you log in onto the portal. I'm just logged in in, um, in incognito mode, um, just for a reason because I'm logged in uh, on another browser. Also, that is an important aspect: is if you try to log in with your account on multiple uh, web portals, um, it will always kick the other ones out. So um, you can only log in at one place. If you need multiple accounts to be able to access the system um, simultaneously, um, then you will have to request additional accounts from NIOH uh, so that they issue additional user accounts for you. It is totally possible. Um, multiple user accounts can submit um, information for different businesses um, um, or just for the same business. So it, it, um, as long as the uh, business ID is correct. Um, so there you'll see um, it will reflect my account. Um, so this account can only log in once. And then um, it is your decision if you would like to allow your location information to be uh, known by the CMOD platform. Um, location information is not used at all um, by the CSR or by NIOH. Um, so it's not submitted into their um, data lake. Um, so uh, the location um, aspect would be for your own um, use. It would be beneficial for your own use. So I'm just going to allow that for now. Um, and it will show you there in the browser bar, um, the, this site, the Seymour site can access your location. Now, um, this is typically affected through your ISP. Um, we will then resolve a location somewhere along the chain. If you do this on a tablet with a GPS, um, obviously it will have a, a much better resolution, um, but normally that will be your ISP's uh, breakout point, or if you've got a, a smart router in your business, some routers do have location information. Um, the Zoom function that I spoke about, it's um, on the, uh, the Google Chrome browser menu. Um, you can zoom in or out there. So you will see I'm zooming out at the moment. So everything is getting smaller. Um, I can also zoom in to make things bigger. And this is where um, if you've got a lower resolution screen, this is typically what you might end up with. If your screen looks like this, um, you might struggle a little bit to submit data um, because you have to scroll a lot. So um, zooming out um, might be um, something um, useful. Uh, Seymour has not been developed for um, that zooming. Um, so some functions and things might not function as expected. Overall, it, it should, um, it should uh, behave relatively well, um, but some things might, might uh, break down a little bit. As I said, it was developed for a full HD screen. Um, so I'm just going to um, 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 show you, okay, so on the map, um, the map view is um, important if you have multiple businesses, say, throughout a province or a region, and you want to use that aspect, so um, otherwise uh, you can use different um, map views, and these map views are not hosted by the CSR or NIOH, these are open source, um, public accessible maps. Um, so the quality of the maps and so forth, um, there is no vouching for that as these are free um, map sources. However, um, if you're in a bandwidth challenged environment, if your bandwidth is a, is a problem, um, the dark um, mode is the most efficient. Um, and then OpenStreetMap and then the others in terms of satellite views and, and, and so forth. So you can use all which one is most appropriate for you, but dark is the most efficient. Then if you want to create um, records or submit data, 
um, you will see um, I, cl I clicked on new event um, and then you've got the four types of records and a none. Now none is the one that if you select that it would result in a exclamation mark. I just want to demonstrate that um, so, so that um, it is um, visible to, to what happens. So the moment you see a record like that um, it means that you haven't submitted any proper information. And it is clear from the questionnaire because there is nothing here that talks around the information that you have to submit. You are welcome to use this event for other aspects. This will not be submitted into the NIOH da um, data lake. So if you want to use this event for other purposes, um, um, you are welcome to use it. Um, it is, it's definitely there. Um, you can access it. That data will not be submitted. Uh, however, the moment you use a positive test, a return to work, symptom screening, or a vulnerability report, um, that will be submitted um, to, um, to, to NIOH. So I'm just going to do a symptom screening one now. Um, I'm going to type in um, uh, an example number. This is not appropriate number. Um, the format of the number, um, you definitely you have seen that in your registration email. Um, so please make sure to use the, the correct number. Um, there you can um, select true, um, and then um, you fill in the information as required. I'm just going to fill in um, example information, so I'm not going to fill it in. Um, you have to fill in all of the fields, um, actually, so not just um, um, uh, the, the ones that you uh, want to, you have to um, uh, fill in all of the information. I'm just going to select those fields. Um, you will see that it's not possible now to create uh, a record. And what happens is some people fill in up to there. They don't scroll down and they click create and then they don't see that required field. Now, this field is not, again, this is now not, um, this is now not submitted to, to, um, to NIOH information that you put there. This field is for your own purpose and for your own use. So uh, that, that can be of benefit to yourself, especially when you want to export data or when you want to do something with the record, um, the records that you've um, submitted to, to it. This field, you don't have to fill in unless you want to backdate. Um, that field share, um, share group, NIOH, OHS, that um, you leave unchanged. Then the second bit um, that is also not recorded for NIOH purposes, but that is applicable um, for your own advantage, um, is if you want to put in a position. Now, um, this, this data, um, as I said, it will not reflect, it will not, it will not go anywhere. It remains on the platform and it remains there for your use. So if you click anywhere on the map, it will automatically fill it in. It will try to uh, resolve an address. It might not always, that's not critical. You can also edit these things and you'll see as you edit it, it will move, um, it will move um, your, your location on the map as you, as you do it. So I'm just going to create this event um, um, like that. So there you see there's an appropriate icon. Um, I'm going to do the same with a couple of other events just to uh, get a bit of data in. What you will also notice is, um, let me just first do another um, uh, a symptom screening one. Um, if I do now another symptom screening one, it will automatically um, put my business ID there. Um, that business ID will not be there when I want to create now, say, a vulnerability. Um, I have to paste it there for the first time. Um, I'm just going to do uh, uh, another um, example one. Um, let's call that a one. Um, I'm going to give that a position. Um, you will see now if I do another uh, um, vulnerability one, it will automatically fill it in. This will, this, um, this, we call it a sticky field in Seymour. This sticky field is specific to the operator, the user account and the record. So once you've done four different records, it will, it will remain there. So if you now log in on a different uh, user account for the same business ID, um, the first time you will have to paste the, the ID correct and then it will remain there and, and so forth. So I'm just going to um, submit another um, um, example case. 
Um, this one, I'm not going to give a location. Um, so you will see if it's got a location, it shows you the little um, uh, location um, button. You can click on that. This one won't have a location. So now the problem is this one you, ca you cannot see on the map. Um, okay, so those I created in the sea, I see. <laughs> um, they, they're not appropriate. And this is where the other view comes in. So if you now want to review your data that you've submitted in a different manner, you can now go there and you would be able to see all of your data there. And what is um, really useful is you can also filter for any of the columns. So um, you can also change the order and, and so forth. If you had multiple users, um, you could have um, also filtered according to multiple users. However, your system will be configured in such a way that uh, the different users cannot see the records from um, other users. So even if you have, as a business, you have a single uh, account, uh, um, a single business, uh, business ID, but say you've got uh, five different operators, the different operators won't be able to see each other's data. Um, um, this is uh, just um, as a result of how the platform was configured for this specific application. Normally, um, it would be possible for people to collaborate on information and so forth, but uh, um, the CMOD platform is not uh, configured in that manner um, for, for this specific application. I'm just going to log a few more um, different types of events. So want to do a positive there. I'm just going to paste my business ID. Um, please remember, I'm just uh, doing random data select um, data here. So um, it's not really um, um, correct uh, um, in how I do it. I'm just going to randomly click on the map. And um, so we've got some screenings and then um, uh, let's do a return to work. Um, I'm just going to do that one, um, return to work and uh, just going to create that and create uh, um, one or two more. Uh, well, let's create one of each. You see, there is my ID now. I don't have to put it in there. You can type the ID of the person. Um, if you, um, that is a South African national ID. Um, um, uh, sorry, uh, the, the next few, that's the employee ID. Um, and then there's also an option to type in a, a national ID. So if you type a national ID, um, you will see it gives you guidance on the fact that it uh, is not correctly formed. Um, however, you can still submit. So um, uh, this was a positive test. So let's do, um, let's create it like that. Um, you will see I can still create it with that invalid ID. So um, that is just a guidance. It is just a guidance in terms of, of the ID. You can type uh, a passport number there as well and submit it. Um, it, will, it, will, it, it will go through. So just to show you, um, you can type a passport. So now we've got a, a bit of data. I'm just going to create some vulnerability um, examples. Um, and um, randomly, I just want to actually move a little bit away from that region um, and create uh, some system screening. And okay, so yeah, so we've got a few data points now. Um, these data points um, tonight, uh, I think around, I can't remember exactly what time, around 11 o'clock or something like that, all of this data will be submitted into the NIOH data lake. Now, I will ensure after today that this data is not submitted because obviously this is not uh, proper data and it will confuse the NIOH system if I submit um, crazy data like this. I just want to show you that you can now see your events um, on the map. So again, that is for your own use. Um, if you would like, uh, you know, um, if say you want to do a return to work, and you would like to keep track of where um, the people are during, um, uh, during their quarantine time or so, um, you could use uh, the appropriate location on the map. Um, it is not, the data is not used by NIOH, the location data, only the, the completed questionnaire part is, is used by them. Um, I don't know if um, some of you realize, but once you've submitted an, uh, a record, um, 
you are able to um, edit it. Um, so you can make any change to it um, and you can save it and it will reflect there. However, if you make changes um, um, on a day um, and the record has been submitted to NIOH already um, during the batch uh, run during the evening, um, that update will not go through um, if you do it the next day. So if I do a record um, capturing today and I do an edit now, like I just did now, the correct record will go through to NIOH. However, if I submitted something yesterday and I made a, a correction today, that correction will not go through to NIOH. It will only reflect for your own use. So um, that is, uh, it's probably a better idea to log a new record um, if, if you need to submit updated um, data and, and so forth. Uh, that um, is also for NIOH um, um, to decide. So um, I have to sort of make you aware of the edit function because um, it, it um, has got implications in terms of data. You can also look at the audit log um, if you're unsure around when changes were made to records um, and, and so forth. So you are able to um, look at the audit log and, and so forth. Um, some people also have uh, requested if they post the data into the private group um, there, you can see you can select private instead of NIOH. Um, private is really private. If you push it into private, it means it is only visible to this user, and that data will also not go to um, it will not go to NIOH. So um, if you select private there, your records will remain private. It will go nowhere. Um, it can be used for yourself. So that is another way to use the system for your own benefit um, is to um, is to do that. But uh, it will not be visible to to anyone else. Good. So um, this is the, um, um, the the way that you capture data. Um, remember, I said that um, if you click there and it doesn't want to create, um, remember um, the description field. Um, that is critical. Um, the location is not required. Um, you can you can create that, um, and, and uh, it is useful. Um, if you want to do stuff um, that are geolocated. So um, your choice if you want to um, use that information. Um, the event view, I've already showed you that. So you will see my additional data there. Just to make sure that you select the appropriate um, period. So um, if, if I sell, um, say um, today, it will still reflect if I... Um, maybe yeah uh, there's not really a, a setting for me that will filter my data now so um, nevertheless you can still click on the data and you can still view the records and 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 so forth good then there um let's now just uh, confirm on our agenda so we capturing records um map display geolocated event view and filtering those we've done we're now going for the basic reporting view so um, if I now go for the reporting view, um, I just want to show you. So that is the main Seymour view menu. Awareness view is your normal map view, event view. Um, and then, um, yeah, there it is. And then uh, reporting um, is uh, a basic reporting view. Here you can also change the map and, and so forth to, um, to, to the appropriate type of map. You have to select, um, oh, that will show all the districts. So you can turn that off um, if you want to. Um, you select, um, basically, I'm going to select today because I've only captured data for today. Um, here, you can select um, all the tags. Um, you, um, it is your choice what you would like to select there. I'm just going to select all of them for now. Um, you can also leave it like that uh, if you would like to see if things have been submitted to into the appropriate share group um, versus private. You can uh, make that um, uh, selection. And here you can actually report for a, a, a district. So um, if, if the um, map location function was used, um, it would be possible to, um, to see, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, refine the report to a specific um, region. 
or district. Um, workflow, there is a workflow on Seymour um, that is not really accessed um, for this. The workflow will not have an effect on data um, submitted to, um, to NIOH unless you discard an event. Um, and uh, I haven't actually shown you um, that aspect, but um, uh, preferably not to discard. And then um, if you had to use mobile clients and you had to use the tracking function of Seymour, you could have uh, um, use that aspect as well. Um, so then you have to click apply and there you will see all of the, the, the records and for some strange reason, oh, uh, mine will show Monday there. Um, that is just a strange little bug, um, which it sometimes do um, with uh, the day of the month. It actually shows the correct um, a, a date there, but it, um, it shows it uh, as yesterday. The distribution event um, is, is not always um, uh, accurate. It's sometimes a day out to have that. So this is just a distribution. Um, so uh, when data was collected, this, it is interactive. You can click there. However, these settings are not, are not safe. There you can see the one note tag that I did. Um, I did a symptom screening. I did a vulnerability, a positive test and a return to work. So that's, that's the data that we've um, um, submitted. Um, the same can be do. This is a time graph. Um, so you can um, switch to the appropriate mode. We, we've been busy now for a little bit. Um, there you can, um, the moon elimination is not applicable here. Um, so uh, again, this is also interactive. This is basic um, reporting to check something quickly. It is not intended for, um, for uh, uh, exporting and, and so forth. You can uh, try to print it to PDF and so forth. Um, it is possible to, um, to do that. Here you will see some sort of heat map um, as you submit additional data and so forth. It will be um, become more interesting, especially if you use the geolocation aspect. If you don't use the geolocation aspect, then obviously this view is not important to you. It will also give you that uh, summary there that might be interesting. And you'll see I've, uh, by, def uh, by, by just um, random clicking on the map, I've used two different um, um, uh, um, um, districts. The C ones, I'm not too sure, I, can't, I must confess, I don't know what it actually does with them. Um, I think it just ignores those in terms of, of um, um, that aspect. So this is the, the very, very basic reporting aspect. Um, the next one, um, before I want to go to analytics, which might be a bit more interesting for users, is query view. So um, just remember, you select the different views there on that main view menu, so query view. And what query view allows you to do is to create um, reports for specific things. You can select um, by clicking control, uh, holding in control. While you hold in control, you can select multiple. And then obviously um, you can select all groups there or NIOH. I'm not going to select a no tag one for now. Um, you can also select private if you post it into private, but remember what I said around private. Um, it is not... Um, accessible for the NIOH um, case. I'm just going to select the entire March for now, of, well, Feb and March. Um, let's just make that, um, yeah, oh, well, it doesn't actually matter. Um, yeah, it actually is irrelevant. Um, so you can execute the query. Um, it will bring it to screen. Um, if you've submitted too, too many data records, um, this view is not very efficient. So it might actually, um, it might actually um, not always work. So event view is very similar to this, but uh, this is a bit more extensive. So sometimes your browser might time out and then this view is not possible. It's because you've got too much data for the interface. Um, this is not a very efficient view. You can also um, use the same configuration to click on export Excel. Um, you don't have to do this execute query. Um, you can uh, do um, export to Excel um, directly. So um, there you'll see it creates um, the Excel file. You can click on the Excel file and you can get your data. So um, there is the data that I've just captured. Um, you'll see that uh, it will not show necessarily all of the fields that you expect. 
it's because I've selected multiple um, I've selected multiple tags. So if you would like to get more details of a specific tag, um, you can just export to Excel. So I've selected just a single uh, tag. Um, and then if I open this one, it will um, it will give me all of the information around that tag. So there you could see all of the data that, that was captured and the ones where obviously I didn't um, put anything um, that, that is not um, completed. There you'll see you get an event ID. So that ID is unique on the system, data created, data occurred. Um, this is the date that you select um, when you, um, if you want to backdate something, uh, description, that is the description field and, and so forth. If you had multiple users, but in this case, it's not going to um, be possible because you, um, users cannot see uh, information from other um, users. Um, there you can see all of the data um, that was exported. This is also the place where you can try to import. However, import is a bit finicky because of the different versions of Excel. Um, However, it is a possibility. Um, ah, sorry, I just need to reset that. Um, just need to reset that. So I want to import. Uh, um, import. It shows you I want to import um, positive test. I can. Uh, I want to post it into that group. I want to select that file. Um, I just want to get that same file that I just created now. Um, uh, it was that one. And then I click, so I selected the file, I click continue, and then it will do a mapping. Um, once you do this, um, it will show you the data and then you can confirm. So if this works properly and the dates look correct and so forth, um, you can, um, you can uh, confirm and then it will load it into it. So once you've loaded it, if you click that confirm, the data is there. Um, and then it will be submitted uh, during the overnight batch run to NIOH. Um, I'm not going to click confirm now because there will be duplicates. Um, I haven't updated the, the descriptions and, and so forth, um, but it should work. It should work because it will issue um, new unique IDs um, for it. But um, I'm not going to go into too much detail with that, that part um, because it might uh, cause some issues. Okay, so... Um, that is the sort of analytics um, option, query view, uh, um, export to Excel view. So getting your data out, that's one of the mechanisms to get your data out is to use query view. Um, analytics view is actually the one that we also want to show, um, which is uh, very important. Um, I think that was the questions that came up at the previous webinar was um, how could we um, access this, this part? So before we do our own types of events uh, or reports, um, there, there's a number of featured reports that you could use. So because I've submitted some date, data now, some test data, um, we can look at this week's events that I have um, submitted. Uh, we can also look at today's events. Uh, so let's let's look at today's events. Um, you just click on that report, and it is um, it is um, it will run, um, and um, it shows you the data. So there is the actual data. Um, so you can click on any of it to still access your data. You can just um, take that away if you want to. This is again a distribution day of the week, and you'll see this one is correct. Um, this one is correct. It doesn't have that strange bug the other view have got. Um, you, uh, you can uh, sort of get a feel for the data that you submitted. Um, and there is a little uh, a legend that you could um, access um, um, there and, and so forth. So you can select here uh, whatever uh, distribution makes sense for you. Um, this is a time graph. Um, so uh, because we only submitted one set of data for today, um, it's not going to, the other options is not really going to be very useful. Um, so the hour one will make sense. Um, I'll show you some of these examples when there is more data um, and so forth. Here you've got summaries. Um, you can now go and get a nice summary of your screening. You can also, if you have multiple um, uh, regions, um, so these are the ones I created in the C, 
Um, this is the ones that I clicked on the, the map. So, um, so there you can properly get it. Um, links is not going to work um, because that is when events are linked in a certain way. It is actually possible. Um, you can access that feature, but uh, yeah, perhaps I can show that it might be interesting um, to, to, to access that um, feature for, for some people. Um, but nevertheless, um, these are sort of the, the different options. Um, here you can use regions. Um, so you see the two regions that I've used there. Um, you can use icons, um, not very useful, I would say. And then event heat map can be sometimes useful, especially if you've got a lot of data um, that becomes useful. So that is possible. You can still switch um, these limited options here, but you can still switch um, to, to make provision for, uh, you know, the different options and, and so forth. So um, you can also change the view, change layout. Um, just to give you bigger versions of what we just had. If that's uh, required, um, you can switch back and so forth. You can also click, um, you can attempt the export, print and the export buttons to PDF. The PDF is, uh, that one should, might not actually work for, um, for this case. Uh, it's, conf it's not configured. Um, the PDF will be huge. It creates a very, very big file. Um, that function is, is, um, is not optimized yet um, for creating a PDF. However, this data can now be easily pushed to Excel again. So um, you can easily um, access that data. Um, and again, because I've selected multiple tags, um, it will only give me a, a summary. Um, however, um, I, you know, I can do that uh, this week's events. I can just click on the Excel button and, and export. So no need to, to even run the report. Good. Um, then um, going to for your own reports. So you can add a basic event report. You can give the report a name. Um, let's call it test01. Uh, test um, I'm going to leave it on today because we've only submitted data for today, but perhaps we should put it on this week. Um, you can now select the tags. I'm not going to include the no tag. Um, that one will not be applicable for this case. Um, and then you can select again between the different um, options there. Um, so we only post the data into OHS. Um, you can even uh, filter according to your region if you want to. And the workflow, um, not really um, uh, applicable in this case, but um, uh, um, you, it, it would have been if, if that was open. So you basically, your configuration is much simpler. You only have to actually select the, the week and the tags that you would like to report on, and you can save this. So um, this is now your own report. Um, and it will run the report and it will give us the exact same screen as we uh, um, uh, just had. So um, there is the um, data that we submitted, uh, day of week and, and so forth. So you get the same thing. You can still export this data. Um, it will be um, in the same format as the other one. Uh, you will not get all of the details um, yet. Good. Okay. So that was now one type of report. What's now nice about this is um, you can set up reports for specific time periods. So for a specific range. So uh, you could set a range. And obviously when you set a range, that will not change. So... I'm just going to uh, do that. So if I say that range, that range will not change. But if I say uh, today, if you run the report, it will always be today. So um, different options. Um, if you would like to um, um, have, you know, different options for reporting. So I'm not going to create that report. What I do want to sh um, just uh, show you is uh, if I... Um, if I do another report and I just select um, positive test um, and I'm just going to run that report. 
So if I export this one now, um, it will now give me again uh, just the basic things. So this is the, the difference between this and query view exporting. Um, query view, when you selected one tag, um, it gave you all of the fields. If you would like to access the detailed events um, of, um, of um, your data that you have um, submitted um, today, I'm just going to see here, you can only select one now. You can't even um, click with the control button. Um, it is just one field. I'm just going to create this basic one um, just to show you um, the difference. So this is a more detailed report. Um, again, if I now export this to Excel um, and I open that, then suddenly I will have all of my uh, details um, in terms of uh, the, the rest of the fields and, and so forth. But what you can also do with this one, you can edit reports. Um, so I just want to add a report. And here you can now start to select certain things. Now, I don't remember in our data uh, if we selected anything with an H. So let me quickly just create uh, an event. I'm just going to do a positive event where the H is 55. I'm just going to create that event. And then I'm going to go back to my reporting, my analytics. And I'm just going to go to my report, which I just created. And I'm just going to edit this report. Um, and I want to say where the age is more than, let's make it 50. Okay, so there should only be one. And there's the one that I just created. There it is. So just to show you, um, I'm just going to create positive test to have an age of 49. I'm going to run that test. And it's still going to show that if I change my event to, to be above 40, it should give me two. And there's the two. Two positive tests with the H. So this is how you can narrow down on, on, on your data and, and, and so forth. So this is a very useful function. Again, you can just run that. Um, and it will only give me those two where the age is above um, a certain level. So you would see there is a number of options. Um, there's a number of options and you can add multiple feeds. Remember, this is an and. So if you say age and um, male or well, let's leave it on, um, let's say we want to only want to get the, all the 50 year olds um, and you can even go and select that. So, so you, this is an and, so it will only report on the stuff where all of this is um, available. If you want to do an or, so you want to get all the females or where the age is above 50, you just duplicate that one and you say, um, sex uh, in, um, equals female. This is an or situation. Um, so I'm just going to save that one. Um, this one is, uh, let me just check if I did that now correct. Ah, let's say um, more than, um, yeah, 50. So we wanna get that one guy and we, it's female. So I'm just going to run that one. I'm not going to get data now. 
I just want to create a positive um, mail. I just want to create um, positive mail. Just create two data points for us. If I now go back to, to that one, it should now give me those options. So there's the female positive test today and there's the 50 year old um, today. So, um, if I change one of the others uh, to, uh, yeah, so yeah, that, that's it. So that's the or, that's how you achieve an or between the two fields. So if you, if you add a field there, that's an and. If you duplicate um, this, it's, a, it's an or. So you can always delete um, these things. You can delete any of those. Um, you can even delete. The, the report if you don't want to reuse um, this report anymore. I'm just going to close it for now. So again, you can click on that ex export Excel button um, and it will basically give you, uh, um, it, uh, it will uh, give you the data directly. You don't have to um, run the report. So let's just go to our agenda. So we basic reporting, analytics, um, exporting your data, data query view, and analytics. So we've covered all of the topics. Um, we've got a few minutes more. Um, I would just like to show you one mechanism which might be useful for some um, people. Um, it is possible. Um, so say now you have a, a test, a uh, um, symptom screening. Um, and you, let's just do a return to work. Uh, just want to do a return to work. Just going to create it. So what you can do is you can create links between things. Um, so first of all, there was a vulnerability. Um, you don't have to do it in this order. Um, there was a, a symptom screen. Uh, that was a return to work, sorry. Now let's stop that one and start again. So there's a vulnerability. Um, there's a symptom screening. Uh, then there's a positive. And then hopefully there was a return to work. Um, so, so you can link cases um, like that. Uh, I just give it a test name there and I, um, I link them. So. On the map, you will see it actually links those events. Um, um, it is not, not necessary to, to visualize that for, for this type of application. Um, that's more appropriate than other types of applications of Seymour. But nevertheless, this gives you a nice way to associate um, your, your four um, um, records and, and so forth. Um, and uh, it might be useful in some cases. This information is not transmitted to in IOH. This will be for your own use. Um, so this is not something that um, would be useful to other parties except for your for your own. So if you now go back to analytics um, and you run, uh, let me just. It's now a bit slower, okay? So if I, this week's events, if I just click on that report, um, it will show you, if you now go to links, it will show you that that sort of happened. Positive uh, symptom screenings resulting in, you know, uh, from um, uh, that, that sort of positive test as a result of symptom screenings and, and so forth. So you can start to see those linkages. And um, it will tell you how many cases um, that is possible. This is obviously a bit more manual work, um, but it might be interesting for certain um, organizations to do that. So I've gone through everything. Um, I, um, I will look at the Q&A um, screen um, so we can have a look at it. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. 
Um, we can take some questions. Uh, I'll also, let me just see. Um, so open questions. Um, okay, so let's quickly have a look. Um, uh, same information to log in the app, but I'll not allow to. Um, assistance can be requested through um, NIOH. Um, so there is uh, um, so assistance. Um, it says I can use same information to log in into the app. Okay, so your credentials um, that you've selected, um, you're received. If you if you um, log in on the mobile app, you have to select the appropriate server. Um, so let me just open that. Um, okay, so here you should see um, the, the steps. Um, so install the mobile app from Google Play Store. When logging the first time, select the DMO CHPC server by tapping on Seymour Africa. So if it tells you your credentials is incorrect, you most likely didn't um, select the correct server. Um, and then once, this, once you've logged in, you have to allow access for these five um, access requests, access to phone and so forth. Um, if you say no to any of them, um, the app is not going to work. None of that requests are used to check or record anything. Um, it is for the application because this application was developed for other purposes as well, not just um, 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 NIOH. So it's actually its benefit and use is, is much wider than this. So that um, the request, those requests are for the benefit of the users. And because it is a controlled access application, um, it means that um, other users won't be able to abuse your information and, and so forth. You use the same credentials, but the critical thing is you have to select the DHP, um, uh, the DMOR CHPC server um, before type um, clicking sign on. Um, so you tap on see more Africa button to, there will be a list of servers and you have to select that um, server. I hope that answers um, Chris's um, question. Um, the support is requested through NIOH that uh, they've got uh, emails um, and then those emails get escalated to us if, if they are not able to um, handle. Okay, so that was done. Um, I've sent data to the private group. Would I be able to change it um, to NIH without submitting the data as a new record? So um, if you, if you um, submit, created a record, um, so let's create a record. Um, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong server. Um, if, you, if you created, uh, let's, well, let's create one. Um, so let's create a symptom screening and I want to post it into private. Um, no one, I created it into private. Um, so this will not be submitted to NIOH at the time. So if I created this today and I tomorrow edit this event and I change it um, here to uh, you can't. Yeah, this one you can't. I forgot that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, at this point in time, it would not be possible to, to change it. So if you want to submit this one into the correct um, group, you can try to do that. Let's just see if that will work. Yeah, so that is the way. So you don't edit it. Um, you basically have to share this to NIOH as well. So this is managed sharing. Um, this is a slightly different mechanism than edit. Um, so EDA doesn't allow you to do it. Um, you have to share this event, um, manage sharing, and click on NIOH. Then to, uh, with tonight's batch um, or tomorrow, so if you created this, thing, this record today in private and tomorrow you change it to NIOH, it will uh, tomorrow only go, uh, with tomorrow evening's batch, it will go into NIOH data lake. So um, that is um, the way. So it is a bit manual. Um, there is not a way to do it in bulk. So if you created a lot of records in private, 
it's going to be a manual process to uh, to to share them all to um, um, uh, in IOH. Okay, I just want to check. Um, I hope I answered that question properly. Um, can one create a link between one person at? Okay, so that was the. Um, you can use any of the things on the left. So um, if you have, uh, let's just uh, show that. So you've got a symptom screening, um, symptom screening uh, P1. And um, let's say the ID there was one, two, three, four, five. It's the same person. And now there's a positive test and the ID was one, two, three, four, five, if I remember, and it's version one. So that is the same person now. That's two records of the same person. I can take that record and I can take that record. And if you don't, you know, yeah, container is just if you don't know what the order of events were, were um, between the two, but uh, in this case, obviously, it is a bit more clear. So you can do that, yes. You can um, do that with um, one person. Okay, I hope and trust um, that is done. Okay, resources. Um, again, that is now a special use case of um, Seymour that is not necessarily the NIOH um, use case. We use Seymour in logistics, safety and security, um, military, um, transport, uh, um, tran you know, a number of fields, um, and also um, conservation and wildlife protection. So um, resources, unfortunately, is not available um, for this deployment of Seymour um, because uh, no resource tags are available and you can't really create a no um, a no tag resource you can try to um, it will not allow you to do much um, our, our resources work is they will have appropriate um, information or resource management tags and those resource management tags can be used with with resources so a resource would now be say you've got a vehicle or a mobile device or a radio or a site or a facility or whatever, and you don't want to type in the details of that every time, you define it as a resource. And then uh, when you use that resource, you just select the resource from a list. Um, but unfortunately, resources aren't available um, for the, the current um, deployment of Seymour. Uh, it's definitely available on the other types of deployments um, of, of Seymour and, and so forth. Uh, um, so I, I hope I answered that question. Um, next one, just to confirm that I understand correctly, say employee A starts feeling sick at work. I will submit the screening event in the company size and get tested and positive. I will create a new. Yeah, so for every case of this, so every case of this, you submit the record. Um, so if it's the same employee, um, it will be identified by the employee ID. That is what will be common across um, uh, the, the tags. So you use the appropriate tag. Um, you don't do that one and then um, create the event and change and edit this one. You create a new record for the four events. These are events. Um, so that is how we interpreted um, the process. Good. Um, okay, I see that was the last. Um, thank you. Um, so unless I just want to check if there's any questions, I see um, in the background they um, handled all of the um, other questions. Um, let me just see if there's on the chat. Um, if there, ooh, I don't know if I can actually uh, uh, Herman, there was one question there on the chat from Jeanette Jordan and on Tlantla, Dr. Tlotling has a re uh, replied to that. The question was, I have tried to register on multiple occasions since last year. I get 
successful response, but they never received the promised email with my details. And the, the um, advice was to email us at OHS workplace at NIH at HRSA. I don't know if you got a, re a response to that, um, uh, I guess, query that Jeanette has raised. Uh, yeah, I, I can't, um, I, off the top of my head, I can't say now, I didn't see, uh, um, I, I know there was one or two cases that struggled, um, which we resolved. But I, I don't know about this specific case. So if they do send an email um, and it reaches me, then I will be able to assist with that. So, um, um, yeah. Okay. Um, in the answered section, I'm not sure if there's any critical ones there. Um, and it might be possible just to ask Prof. Nisha Naika just to give a sense of the um, key uh, questions that have trended there and uh, maybe get some um, uh, reply and response from you to the broad range of questions um, that has already been covered there. Um, there's one more open one in the meantime from Aniki Damon. Um, yeah, I just wanna check this one. Symptom screening, only submit when persons show COVID-19 symptoms, uh, then to be sent for testing. Um, so, yeah, I'm not too sure what the exact question part is. So if a person, um, I think the symptom screening is, is well, that's not testing. So, uh, yeah, um, if a person um, um, the, through the symptom screening um, is, um, is identified, then uh, a person can be requested to isolate or quarantine. Um, you don't have to do a test, I suppose. That is not um, legally required. So uh, unless your work requires that for your conditions, yeah. So I'm not too sure. Sorry, I think uh, NIOH, NIOH to take that question rather. Um, I don't want to venture in that process. And then um, the person that registered on behalf of the company left and is it possible to change the registration details? Um, it is not necessary to change the registration details unless you have... Um, unless you have uh, um, you haven't got access to the um, the password, so if the person changed the password um, and you don't know what the password is, then you can just request us to reset the password for you um, by sending a, a request uh, through the help desk. Um, so that that would be uh, completely possible. It is not necessary to register a new account um, if a person left. So an account, a user account on Seymour is not associated with a person. It is associated with a business. So um, actually it's not even associated with a business because you can, if there are people that are submitting uh, um, records for multiple businesses, the, the identifying part is the business ID. Um, but if you just need a password reset, it's completely possible um, to change that. If you're scared that the person that left the company will access, um, if you haven't updated your password, um, log in with the old password and update the password. Um, perhaps I can just show that. Um, edit profile. You go to, once you've logged in, you go to, you just click on the profile button. Um, go to edit profile. I just want to remove that box. Um, you go to edit profile. You have to type in the old password. Um, and then you um, can type in a, 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 a new password and confirm it and change the password. Um, it is advisable if you want to update your, uh, your, um, your email address. Because um, if we if you request password resets, then the password will be emailed to 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 that email address that is um, that is there. So you can you can request um, you can request a password reset if that is necessary. So I hope I've answered Anik uh, sorry uh, Menzi's question sufficiently. Oh, okay, yes. Good, Aniki, I think, uh, yeah, perhaps you can explain a little bit better what you want. Um, perhaps uh, Nisha also can take that, that question. Um, that is a process issue. Okay, um, so Aniki, that email address that 
is also in the chat box um, would be an important one for you to um, email your uh, more detailed question. And that's, uh, I think it's all capital letters uh, for the first three, OHS, workplace at nih.ac.za. I don't think the font really, uh, the size of the letters matter. OHS, workplace at nih.ac.za. So Aniki Daman, if you could just uh, send your um, query or question to that particular one. So it appears that, uh, um, Herman, that we've covered not just the content that you had uh, uh, planned for this particular program, but we've covered all the questions as well. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any sort of, you know, kind of final messages that you have. Um, I did um, invite um, a prof, uh, Nisha Naika, maybe just to give uh, a comment on some of the questions received, but on your side of Herman, sort of final comments. I, I heard you you mentioned recommending um, a, a, another uh, webinar on a different element. Uh, yes, um, if there's an interest uh, from the bigger environment to use the mobile app um, more for data submission, um, I'm uh, that that requires a different setup um, on my side to demonstrate that live uh, because I do that with a cell phone in the loop. Um, to show people how exactly you can use the mobile app to submit data. That is a possibility. So if there's interest from the bigger group, um, we can arrange a webinar for that. Um, the mobile device um, obviously allows you to be a bit more um, flexible in your data capturing, um, but it has, has got a, a few extra quirks and things that you have to be aware of. Um, that is not so straightforward as the portal. The portal is the best because it is an online um, thing so whenever you can you, because it means that you always connect it the mobile app can work offline so you don't have to have mobile data you can only rely on wi-fi um, and so forth so you can capture data and then synchronize at the end of the day however there are some additional things that you have to be aware of um, when you're doing that um, option and then if you use the same account on your mobile app as you use on the portal if you cannot see your data on the portal that you've submitted to your mobile device, it means it hasn't reached the server. Um, and, and that's one of the examples which I, um, that, the, that the mobile app has got some additional things that you have to take into account. But we can have a look and see if there's any interest um, um, uh, for that aspect. Um, the mobile app is not uh, fully part of this deployment of Seymour, but we do understand that it may be, um, you know, a, a, a need from the, the users and so forth. Um, in, uh, um, that is re just regarding the, the mobile app. Um, with respect to the other things, um, I think, uh, you know, the quality of the data that you submit um, will definitely benefit the bigger environment. So please ensure that your business ID is properly um, populated, um, no spaces, extra spaces and so forth. Um, that is critical and um, um, this will assist um, NIOH and other institutes and um, organizations to um, battle, manage and battle this um, pandemic um, even better. So thank you for all the questions. I do appreciate that. And um, I um, hope that the platform is um, of use to um, you and that you could use at least some of the functions for your own purpose um, and, and for your own advantages um, while you are submitting data to NIOH. Thank you for the time also, Ashraf. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much to you. That's Herman Naru, uh, who's from the CSIR, the um, South African Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, where he's the research group leader for the command and control systems in defense and security cluster with quite a bit of experience in different field areas. So, um, uh, if you could unshare your screen there, uh, thanks, Herman. Um, so immediately, I want to quickly share with everybody that email address. Um, and uh, uh, the Pendile uh, Kumalo has asked if, uh, how she could get in touch with you, Herman. And um, I'm going to give again the uh, generic email address for this particular occupational health surveillance system. 
uh, um, platform that you've described the CMO um, facility to us in much detail in a very practical way. So the email address for you, um, Pindile, is uh, OHS Workplace, all in one go, no spaces, at nioh.ac.za. It's in the chat box as well, Pindile. Um, so at about 23 minutes past 11, you'll see that Nontrantla has um, shared that email address with us. I'll repeat it, OHS workplace at nih.ac.za. And just for a brief moment, I also need to share with everybody um, the following link because we have now got a, an automated uh, setup in order to request all attendees to um, assist us and giving a post a webinar feedback on the event. So uh, if you could take a screenshot or copy this link out of the chat box, I placed it. It is the, uh, I think, second last um, posting there in the chat box where I say all webinar attendees kindly complete the NI short survey for the COVID-19 training for, yeah, for our COVID-19 training webinars uh, on the online red cap facility. You will notice that this particular link, uh, we've used the WITS um, domain. We will be moving this over to the NRH domain, but for now that particular link that is the HTTPS red cap dot core dot vits etc is the link for you to use to please give the positive and other feedback that you've already some of you shared in the chat box uh, i'm sure that uh, herman uh, leroux as well as prof nisha Naikal would appreciate your feedback um, on the red cap to today's session and we'll be asking all our participants and attendees to do that for all future webinars so that's just quickly sharing with you that particular one. And then um, at this point, to conclude this particular webinar, um, uh, we've had many thanks, uh, Linda Karan Jube uh, in the Q&A box. Linda, that's not the place to put the general thank you, but we will receive it warmly. Um, the thank you to both Herman and the team um, for putting this together. Everybody else, Ri uh, Metsi, uh, um, uh, Shamin, uh, Zianda, etc. Thank you for your um, expressions of gratitude and appreciation. So again, thank you to our main speaker, uh, Herman Leroux, who is with the CSIR as the group leader there for the command and control systems in the defense and security cluster, and is involved in quite a, a broad range of areas, command and control technology as applied to the whole government initiatives across diverse domains, including defense, safety and security, public transport, disaster management, health and the protection of infrastructure, natural assets, and for the NIH in this particular partnership. And he's covered all of the key elements of the CMOR in how to create your own reports and the aspects thereof. So as a reminder, this occupational health surveillance um, systems platform is critical for all employers with more than uh, 50 employees as per the Department of Employment and Labor's uh, uh, directive on the 28th of September 2020, and that is the Occupational Health and Safety Measures in Certain Workplaces number R479. And so it's critical as a legal requirement for everybody to submit weekly data on symptomatic employees positive cases, return to work, and health outcomes, as well as a once-off submission on vulnerable employees. And please share this important legal requirement with all of your colleagues in the employer and the organization that you find yourself within the sector and industry that you are part of, and within the geographic location that you find yourself um, and you do have a network of colleagues in other workplaces. We need to strengthen our ability um, to have an in-depth understanding of COVID-19 infection in South African workplaces. And on that note, I need to say also thank you to not just Prof Nishanaika in the uh, epidemiology, epidemiology and surveillance section of the NIH, 
as well as her colleague, Dr. Nontlantla Totling. Um, and then obviously our colleagues in the IT section, and that's our colleagues, Glenn and Tabani, um, under the um, leadership of, um, uh, oh, now I forget my colleague's name, apologies. <laughs> um, the head of the information services section, um, and then also under the broader auspices of the chairperson of the NIH's COVID-19 Occupational Outbreak Response Team, that is Dr. Tanusha Singh, and our executive director, Dr. Spo Halamono, um, thanks to the team as a whole. And this is where we conclude this particular webinar on the occupational surveillance systems, particularly the Seymour platform, creating your own reports, a hands-up workshop. Thank you for joining us. Please don't uh, forget to go and do the particular um, red cap survey. It will also be emailed to you. It is in the chat box. Please copy the link there in the chat box for those who um, can more kindly do that particular um, online red cap uh, post webinar survey. Um, so I will see if I can possibly just share that also in the slides post session. So goodbye. See you in our next webinar.